And we are back. And we just finished watching 2021's Antlers, rated R with a runtime of one hour and 39 minutes. This is a horror film that is currently streaming on HBO Max. This was directed by Scott Cooper from a short story called The Quiet Boy by Nick and Tosca. I hope I said that correctly. With also other screenplay credits going to Henry Chason and also Scott Cooper. This is the story of a young boy named Lucas, really brilliantly played by Jeremy T. Thomas, who is very withdrawn and very, very emaciated and oftentimes bullied. I think this is actually more of the teacher's story, though. It, possibly, or but... Maybe, I guess I guess it is both of them, but I, I, I feel like the teacher, the teacher's story is... And By I, saving it, him, she saves yeah, herself. Exactly. Yes, it has yeah. more backstory to it. Yeah. Although her backstory is very vague. I mean, I think it, they don't go into it too much, but you can infer certain things by the things that you see, I believe. Getting to your point, the teacher, Julia Meadows, was played by Carrie Russell and her brother, Paul Meadows, played by Jesse Plemons. She is Lucas's teacher and Jesse is her brother, who's also the town sheriff. And she has come back, it seems to her hometown after an extended stay away. Yeah, I think she. it seemed like she set up life in L.A. where she, I guess she was a teacher for a while, but... Whatever get, happened. I get, I get the impression something bad happened there as well. And she returned home now that she's able to return home because her father is dead. She clearly has experienced an abusive relationship with her father. Yeah, yeah. physically and... Physically like, and probably Probably sexually. sexually. Yeah, or at least that's what it feels like you can infer from the things that you see. This was not yeah. really a horror movie, or in, no, no, it wasn't it, in it, in the traditional was, sense of a horror movie. It was a horror movie. It just, I'll be honest, it just wasn't scary. Agreed. I think we both said that at the end of our it. Was it? You know what it watching. was? It, it, it was a horror movie, but it was of the type that you could probably just say, oh, it was a monster movie. Yes, yes, yes. And not all monster movies are scary. scary. Right. Yeah. And this one, it just wasn't. I mean, the creature was well done. The creature was well designed. Uh, and the aftermath of the creatures, I guess, roaming the land was terrifying. Yeah, there was a lot of mutilated corpses, corpses and whatnot. Yeah. I agree with you. I, I, I don't think that the film was scary. I feel like this, I don't know. I, I feel like it was just okay. I think it could have been better. I think it was just okay. And it's unfortunate because I think the film itself had a lot going for it. The cinematography is really great. The set design, the actors were all really, really good. I was really impressed with that little kid, yeah. Lucas. He was really, really well done. I just didn't get any sort of sense of foreboding or, I don't know, the, it didn't really have that creepy atmosphere right. to it. Right, right, right. I feel like I've, I've, my stomach has been more not watching like a supernatural episode than this. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, that never really, that to me was always just monster movie type stuff too, but. True, but they uh, think there, there's more stakes. Maybe there just was, wasn't here. I mean, I felt, like, I really like, felt like you for could the say, little boy, but. Like, like, like if you were comparing this to another type of, mon like another monster movie, like Alien. Alien is also a monster movie. But there's a definite sense of dread and foreboding. Oh my gosh, and, yes. And everything. It's everything, suspenseful. Yeah. This, I didn't feel any suspense. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like the, the kid in his little hovel bed yeah. with the door, you hear the banging and growling behind the door. Right, right, right. I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't make me feel feel like what the hell's going on yeah and yeah i never maybe felt because that way they, maybe because they just showed it right off the bat that. and it wasn't like leading up to anything like like perhaps if if when the teacher first came to the house uh amy madigan right the no no no, no. carrie russell, Carrie russell. Uh -huh. when carrie russell julie. first comes to the house when julie first comes to the house the door creaks open, open. and she hears and the noise she, you hear the noise if i didn't but i knew that the noise was right the, the door with all the locks on it. But she did something that we were both surprised about. She did the smart thing. She just got the hell out of there. <laughs> it was like amazing Unlike and sort of refreshing. Unlike the Amy Madigan character who yeah. just barged in. Yeah. She, like it was her house. She shouldn't have gone in. No, no, not at all. What did you think of the film? Like I said, I just thought it was okay. It was, it was like a generic monster flick. What could have made this better? I think perhaps... 
somebody who who knew how to work that suspense and dread into it maybe oh because like the visuals you could see the the visuals were very good fantastic, you know, the, fantastic. The, the muted color the the background the fact that everything looked always looked overcast yeah but just like like camera placements uh ambient noise all of those things usually work really well if you want to get somebody you want to get that adrenaline going yeah. pumping behind the person's consciousness behind the viewer's consciousness where when you do go for that killer shot you're like ah, the person has already got so much adrenaline in their system that they just they lose it they get that heart attack moment this didn't have any of that it was just right, sort of right. like look okay this is it this is how it is and even at the end would it have made more sense than to keep that part hidden until later in the film it would have been more sense to keep the door hidden uh, or or, or, or the, just or, or what just they looked like. Well, they they did they they did a decent job as far as not giving away the whole creature. Mm -hmm. Like in the beginning, it's just the dad looking all skinny and his hair's falling out. You right, know, right. he looks sort of like a he was like irradiated almost. Mm -hmm. You don't really get to see the whole creature until pretty much the very end of the movie, and that that that's fine. I thought they did an okay job with that, but. Like I said, there just wasn't any sort of creepy atmosphere that got me thinking, oh, what the hell is that? What's going on? What is happening? Right, right. Even when like the when those two guys or the, the father and his partner are in the mine and they start hearing the weird noises, mm -hmm. I never got that big a sense of dread. There wasn't, I guess maybe there, were, there wasn't any close-ups on faces or, or uh, I don't know. It just, there was something lacking that I think somebody who had a bit more experience would have, or maybe okay. a more, somebody who studied the that type of genre a little bit more would have been able to use more of those tools to get me nervous about it. When we were watching this film, I wanted to like it more because I really thought the actors did a really great job. All of them. Nobody Every, phoned yeah. it in. Everybody was committed to the, to the parts that they played. I think the colonel here was interesting and I think our interpretation of her kind of paralleling her life to Lucas's and not wanting him to fall into the same victimhood that she did. Yeah. I think those things worked. However, as a whole, there was a, a lot that just didn't really sync up together. And I was thinking about A Quiet Place, which is a story that doesn't really rely on on too much effects but still tells this very yeah like in, in a quiet place your adrenaline got yes up. yes like you knew bad stuff was happening and the monster wasn't on the screen for a whole hell of a lot no in the movie. you don't really see it until well you see a flash of it in the beginning yeah you see flashes of it but you don't really see it till later later in the film yeah, that's a that was an effective monster movie. Right. You have this creature and you don't know what's going on, how how, the, how you, you knew the rules in that movie mm -hmm. and you knew that any false step meant death. Right, right. And this one it was just like I don't know. I I, I didn't I I just didn't I wasn't invested in the peril that some of these characters were in. I mm -hmm. mean, I never felt worried for the boy. Right. Cuz you always felt like the father, even though he was turning into this monster, still sort of retained some of that humanity and and yeah. recognized his sons as his sons. Yeah. And that even when Julia takes Lucas a afterwards when he's, I guess, out of the hospital and she takes him to their house and he turns to her, Lucas turns to her and says, they're coming for me. That's where the parallels cease, right? Obviously, Julia's father wasn't like Lucas's father. I think Lucas's dad did a lot of bad things, like trying to be the next Walter White, yeah. but there was definitely love there. And you see it in those brief vignettes where he's like, don't open this door. Whatever you hear, don't open this door. Or even in the beginning with the younger brother. With the, the younger truck. brother, yeah. yeah. And he says, I love you yeah. to the son, which is not something that an abusive parent would say. Yeah, he's like so, joking around with his kid. His kid clearly cares about him. And vice versa, and yeah. Vice versa, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, like those little details, I think are lovely and add to the story. But I think that 
maybe they should have done more with like finding these these like mutilated carcasses and just going with that and then going with the explanation from that guy about the Wendigo. Yeah, like I think they just gave away too much in the beginning. Yeah. I, I think it would have been more interesting if it, if they kept it a bit more mysterious. Mysterious until the end, yeah. Until the end. And you, like, you knew this kid was involved somehow, but you didn't know exactly how. And you didn't know like what kind of stakes there were on top of it just being his dad, but also his little brother right, and, right. and like all the pieces that were involved. Yeah. It, it just sort of felt like, I don't know. Like the they, idea they, they, behind they, it was good. It's they, just they went too they went in too straight of a line. Yeah. And they just gave away too much. Too much. Too soon. Yeah. I mean they didn't give away the, the creature, but they gave but away it did, did they it gave, matter they gave because... away the story. And and you got the good creature effect, but honestly the story is not not really the best. Like right. like uh, I would say a similar another similar monster movie uh, uh, you you never saw it, but that movie The Ritual. Oh right, you told where me about where the guys it. are in the woods. Like that was creepy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're dealing, and th th yeah, there's a lot of parallels there. You're dealing with the woods. You're dealing with some sort of large antlered beast. And they're in a different country, so that there's that. Well, I'm, I'm just doing unknown. the parallels to this. Oh, to the so, okay, never yeah, mind. But I'm just saying like woods and stuff, and and like seriously, the woods are creepy. Mm -hmm. You could do a lot with that. They, a lot was left on the table as far as that in that respect. Agreed. Yeah, I think that they had, they had some of, they had a lot of the pieces, but you're going for horror, and you kind of missed the mark on that one. Yeah. There's more to horror than just a cool looking monster. Right, and I think like it's, it, I mean we the other thing that we said was that this really wasn't scary. Like our our youngest who scares super quickly probably could have sat through this yeah i mean she probably would have covered her eyes when they revealed some of the bodies right that was a little intense. but as far as everything else there wasn't that like the thing that like really freaks out our youngest is like the suspense yeah 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 and this one just didn't really have that there wasn't any sort of music or audio thing that sort of like got you like eh, something bad's yeah. happening yeah, yeah, like yeah. like i don't go back to hereditary Terry, yeah the the ambient noise in hereditary is, is nuts yeah yeah it yeah. is like it's just poking the pieces of your brain that control you being scared yeah yeah and you don't even realize it you yeah. don't even realize what's going on until like it's too late that thumping <laughs> ambient noise is now your heartbeat yeah and it's been getting faster the entire time and yeah. now you're right there with it you're just full of adrenaline your eyes are open your pupils are dilated you're you're just like uh, and then what the hell? <laughs> you know <laughs> god damn Joni. I, I wanted to like this more because again too, yeah. guillermo del toro is involved in this film but uh, it's hard i mean it wasn't the uh, worst thing i've ever seen i mean i'm i i'm happy that i saw it it was on my list of to watch so i'm glad yeah. i i got to it like the I performances said, were really good yeah. the monster himself was really well done they had a lot of pieces for a good movie yeah it's just they forgot the horror and i gotta be i gotta be honest to me i could be wrong i we didn't discuss this prior to this but i found the ending kind of cheesy I mean, I understood why. Like the, the, like oh, it's not over yet. Exactly. Yeah. That I, that bothered me too. I yeah. Would've, I would have just been happy if everybody just was like, "All right, let's go home." And yeah. That's it. And that's it. Yeah. I didn't need that extra little bit. That yeah. to, that to me felt that took me that, out. That also felt amateurish. Yeah. Know? That took me out. That took me out. I'm like, yeah. It's yeah. funny you mention that because I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, I was, like, I was I really disappointed because I was like, oh, okay, I guess, yeah, but really, this wasn't really, really needed. This does well and they get a sequel. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And it's too bad because everybody did a really fine job here. Jesse Plemons was always great. Kerry Russell was great. That young boy, uh, what is his name? I just said it. Jeremy T. Thomas. He was fantastic. My God. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I was just disappointed. I, I really wanted to like this more. Yeah. yeah they, they definitely did a lot of, like, paint-by-numbers stuff in this. Yeah. I and mean, this like, could have just been, like, like... Like, oh, here's the bully. All right, this kid's yeah. going to get his. Yeah. Oh, here's the the 
the, the part, nosy the, administrator, the, the nosy administrator, yeah. or, or the 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 partner who yeah. doesn't really have many lines. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, well, oh, here's a, a exposition guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. like as soon I as mean, I saw could have been like, as soon as I saw that guy, I was yeah. like, oh, he's the exposition guy. I mean, this could have been like a forty-minute anthology kind of thing. They could have really tweaked the story and. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting legend. The legend of the Wendigo is is an interesting legend, and it's an interesting sort of like creature, curse, whatever you want to call it. But I've. And I've always wanted to see like a good yeah. story involving that, but I just Rick never Yancey. did. You know what? Curse of the Wind to go by Rick Yancey. Guillermo del Toro, please option it. It's the Monstromologist book series. It's the second book. It, <laughs> it's a probably well, the best. Well, I would say the first and second. I'm just talking about this, the Wendigo story. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's probably the, as far as Wendigo stories go. That was really well done. Very, very well done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very well done. Guillermo, please option it. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see him do the Monstromologist. Even like just the first one. Like the first one the is first so one out of control. So, so I good. was like, yeah. what in the hell? And that's the funny thing is it's like tagged as young adult. I'm like, this is, there is no way this is young I adult. Know. Holy cow. I mean, as a young adult, I was young, reading, you know, yeah. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, yeah. which is also kind of, I guess, inappropriate. But, like, young, young my parents took a, a whole different other thing, thing now. Yeah. It's so crazy. Like, this one was, like, nuts. I loved it, though. That that book was totally – well, that series was, like, completely in my wheelhouse. But, um, yeah, just a little disappointed. Again, not the worst thing I've no, ever seen. It's, it's not okay. the best. It's, it's just okay. okay. I mean, it gets a lot more – I guess credit for me for the performances and the visuals but it just wasn't scary but it just wasn't scary and i just i mean even if they wanted to make this as a different type of film i don't know like you could have i i think it would have needed to be longer i think they needed to streamline a little bit of the story i don't think it needed to be longer i just think they needed to, to... i don't know maybe get a, be a different editor in there to, to take all those pieces and Put it in a way that it built suspense rather than just hey here it here it is mm -hmm. I'm throwing all my cards on the table. Yeah, you know, I think no, that no, nothing's hidden, nothing's a mystery. Seriously, that you could have just oh, there's the creepy boy. What's going on with his life? Yeah, I, I knew instantly. Oh, he's the guy's son from the beginning. Clearly, something happened there. Right, right. The story is exposed. I would have liked if we went on a journey where the teacher so did finds the... out what's going, what's going on because on. she notices that there's this quiet little boy in her room in her in her class right who's clearly got some sort of disturbing stuff going, going on, on in his life. yeah 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 i mean they could have started the story there i mean you didn't even need to see the beginning the yeah. beginning like they you could know, have started it like with... show me that in a flashback or something i don't know but yeah. or let me just figure it out i mean the, they did talk about the father he was a meth addict okay well then we find out oh we found a body in the woods so we're gonna look around see if there's any clues oh it leads us to the mine and all this other stuff yeah it, it could have been told better i think yeah. like i said i think you have something decent there it yeah. just needed yeah. somebody who knew how to work the tricks who like was a master of that toolbox and just presented you the p just enough in the beginning to get you like hmm, this is well interesting. it's interesting that you say that because Again, Guillermo's an executive producer on this, so... Executive producer is meaningless. It just means that I, I enjoy... I think this has promise. Here's money. Oh, you need some extra clout? Here's my name, too. Yeah. That's that's what an executive producer does. Hmm, if he was, if he was, If he was an actual creative person on the film it would have been it would have said like written or co-written right right or of uh, given given some kind of writer's credit right or, right you know something like that but it's just uh when you whenever you see like a film oh it's tim burton's a nightmare River. everybody thinks he directed it he didn't direct that movie yeah yeah he at least in that case he he drew those the characters right so in that case, yeah, okay, that he is has his. some stake But in it, yeah. a lot of times, seriously, Stan Lee is, God bless him, <laughs> executive producer on pretty much every Marvel film. He didn't write any of those movies. Yeah. He came up with the ideas way back in the 60s and 70s. Sure, sure. 
But he's still getting his check. He's still getting and that his check. And his estate is still getting his check yeah. now that he's gone. Yeah. A lot of films, it's just, oh, it's produced by the, the from the makers of. Yes. That's always my favorite line, yeah, from the makers like, of. Well, did they make this one? No. <laughs> but they put their name on it. There you go. I, I feel like I agree with you. I think... I think this story would have been better if you focused on the teacher. Maybe not even give her an abuse backstory. Maybe she. No, no. I I feel like that that helped because Did that it? that in in that respect it it had me identify with her and made me believe this she's is why in this, this is why she's gonna notice the signs. Mm -hmm. She's going to think this kid's in an abusive home just like I was in an abusive home. And that also leads to a bit of ambiguity because you're thinking, oh, is this, is she reading too much into this? Is it just an abusive home? No, it's not any of those things. His dad is a Monster. possessed by a spirit that makes him want to devour flesh forever. Right. It's like the, that to me is like when some of the best horror when you're, it's just like, this is a family drama. Oh, this is about loss. Oh, wait, this is about freaking raising a demon and and <laughs> putting him in the right body. And then you're just like, by that point, you're just like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> this didn't, it could have had it. It yeah. could have had yeah. that, but it didn't. It yeah. was just like, this is this. So my notes would have been right. started at the beginning with the teacher, with the Carrie Russell slash Julia character, just watching Lucas and becoming more concerned, maybe saying something hurt to her brother, who's also the sheriff of the town. Well, yeah, build, maybe build he up says, to the craziness. Maybe he says, oh, I'll send somebody over to the, to the house to see what's going on. Somebody that doesn't get any kind of dialogue goes out there and is immediately devoured off screen. You hear screaming, you see blood, cut to the next scene. And then gradually have those more visceral moments of like the carnage of the monsters, right? Because I think that was good. That was well done. I think the, the FX team on that was did a really good job because I uh, found that completely you know disturbing. I, I did think the, the visual effects on the creature were good. I did not really like the, the scene at the teacher's house where the police get attacked mm -hmm. because it just felt repetitive. It felt weird that it's like, oh, I'm going to investigate the, the little shack. That's the end of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, there's somebody hanging out in the shack. End of you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm going to go get my brother from the shack. It's just like, yeah. mix it up a bit. It's, you have, I don't know. I, I felt like maybe they were like, okay, we just, we don't want to show too much of this thing. And I don't really feel like blocking out another type of shot. Yeah. yeah. So we're just going to use this door in the shack for basically both things. Yeah. Yeah. Where you see like the, the hand of the thing and, and it just, it, that felt lazy to me. Yes. Yeah. 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 This, this, well, this to me, this, I mean, this felt like a, this felt like a, I'm guessing that this director, I don't know. Has he had much experience? I think he's done other things before, but not like, not I think this, this is yeah. probably like his biggest budget. Yeah, it just didn't feel like maybe the I don't know, I don't know. It just felt it just felt very workmanlike. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did Crazy Heart. That's interesting. Well, that was like like a Talking Head picture, though, right? That's the one with the um, Bo Bridge or Jeff, Jeff Bridges, Bridges and uh, Maggie about, Gyllenhaal. It's, yeah, it's about like singing or something. Or he's it? like an alcoholic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that I mean, that's just weird. I'm like. Yeah, there's not much like energy or visceral activity going on in, in Crazy Heart. That was his first movie. And then something called Out of the Furnace. That's with uh, my boyfriend Christian Bale, right? I don't 2013. Know. Never heard of it. When Rodney Bayes mysteriously disappears and law enforcement doesn't follow through fast enough, his older brother Russell takes matters into his own hands to find justice. Mm. Yeah, Christian Bale, Casey Affleck. Zoe Saldana, Woody Harrelson. He also did Black Mass with Johnny Depp, then Hostels. Oh, from... So this guy's got a lot of experience. Yeah. I, mean, I guess horror is just not in his wheelhouse. This is this is definitely the first. I mean, he seems to be more of like a cowboy kind of guy, but he this is definitely his first horror film. Yeah. And uh, it, it kind of felt a little short. I mean, I, even, well, I don't know. Maybe it's considered a thriller. I don't know. I mean, it's it's... It's tagged in IMDb as drama, horror, mystery. Yeah, that's the thing. They they could have made it a mystery, but they didn't. 
Right. And and the horror just wasn't there for me to I mean, I didn't I mean, I'm sure other people would be would think that this is a straight horror, but to me this wasn't. It was yeah. just like a scary story about more yeah. monsters than anything. It was, yeah. a, it was a monster. I didn't even think it was scary. It was just, yeah. a, it was just a monster movie. It was just a monster movie. Agreed. All right. Uh, one to ten. What are you going to give this? Probably give it a six. A six? <sighs> I thought about giving it a six, but I think I'm going to give it a five. Mm. I think it's just okay. I think. You know what? You're right. Yeah. I was. That's what I've been calling it the entire time. Just okay. So, yeah. It's just okay. It's just okay. So, it's, it's kind of middle of the road for me. Middle of the road. Five. Yeah. Both five. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty to look at. The actors really do a good job here, and it's just the way it was organized. They they yeah. robbed it. They robbed it of any suspense, any fear or am- atmosphere. Dread. It, it just dread. Yeah, there yeah. was no dread, and they, you could have had it. You really yeah. could have had yeah. it. Yeah, and the the colonel of the story seemed interesting. Yeah, I mean, but it just didn't pan out in the long run. I mean, if you're looking for new content and you want to watch this, I say check it out, but don't expect much and just enjoy it for what it is. It's just quick, like popcorn storytelling, right? Just in and out. Yeah, this isn't something this, that's this, going to. This isn't gonna this affect gonna linger you. With you. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like a quiet place does a better job of. A Quiet Place, The Ritual, the Alien. Alien. Yeah, we were talking about Alien. Uh, I'm sure there's some other like good, creepy monster movies that do their job. The Host. The Host. Uh, uh, we should talk about that. Yeah. Well, well, there's a lot. The, out, there's a lot out there. The that, Bong Joon one, not the one with Sersha. Yeah, yeah. Because that, apparently that's, there's that's one I with mean. Sersha Ronan. And I, every time I catch it on cable, I was like, "Oh, is that my movie with Bong Joon?" And the I was Korean, like, "The Korean, the Korean one, not movie. the uh, well, not the one with Sersha. I Although she's lovely, I love watching her and stuff. But yeah, I'm sure there's others out there. Yeah, where they just handle the monster a lot better. I'm sure Abbott and Costello meet. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah. There you Don't go. act like you didn't watch Classic. those every Sunday morning. Oh, I absolutely did. And that, and that one was the best one because there was no singing in it. All right. All right. That's it from us. And we will bid you all a good night. Good night.